Glory to God. I believe that um, Mr. Ephraim's um, message through the drums has been of a blessing to you. He's very talented, and I was highly inspired when I heard him, you know, play the drums. Right now, let us get into the Word of God. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you so much for my audience. Lord God, I thank you for what you are doing uh, in their life. I want to thank you so much for the phone calls that we have been receiving all, uh, of all this while, the deliverances, the healings, and uh, the prosperity that you have bestowed upon them. Lord, as I have come to their homes today to share your word, I ask that your word will come in power, not to curse them, not to put them down, but to lift them up. Satan, you are a liar. We bind every plan of yours. And Lord, I pray that you instigate through me your undiluted word to be of a blessing to your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I would like us to turn our Bibles to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, and in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the face of the earth. Hallelujah. See, many of you who are listening to me today are um, familiar with these, these few verses that uh, I just read. We all know that it is God who created mankind. There are a whole lot of teachings going on in the world that men were animals. Then, you know, we became human beings. Personally, I don't believe that. We were not created from animals. The Bible makes it clear that God used death or earth to form man. And after forming us, he breathed in us and man became a living soul. Praise the Lord. See, it came to a time, from time memorial, that Jehovah God needed somebody to fellowship with. So, he made up his mind to create man in his own image after his likeness to take authority and dominion over the face of this earth. See, God purposely created us to worship him, to know him, to serve him. See, God wants to communicate. God loves people. God loves mankind. You see, we have to worship him to be God. So my brothers and my sisters who are listening to this telecast, I want you to know how important you are on the face of this earth. There are so many people who have no aim, no target, no purpose, just walking on the face of this earth, doing practically nothing. And I have entitled this message, Never Settle Anything Less Than God's Perfect Will for Your Life. See, God has His perfect will concerning your life. God wants you to prosper. God wants you to make it in this life. God wants you to live, you know, in joy, peace, and tranquility. Glory to God. See, there are so many people who are frustrated. There are so many people who feel like giving up. There are so many people who have so many questions that are not answered. As you are listening to me, you feel bad. 
You even hate yourself. Sometimes certain things will be going on in your mind to commit suicide. You are so much trouble. Others are also, you know, just walking and doing nothing. You have a plan and a purpose and a sight of God. God wants his plan and his purpose to manifest in your life. But that can only come if you know it from the scripture. And God said, let's make man in our image after our likeness and let him have dominion upon the face of this earth. See, God didn't create you to, to beg. God didn't create you to be parasite, to depend upon somebody. God wants you to be an independent person to have authority over everything on the face of this earth. So as I saw this word dominion, I tried to find the meaning of dominion. And I got this answer, or this interpretation, dominion means the power to govern, or sovereign authority. The territory, to, the territory subject to single ruler or, or government. We know that you know, when someone heads a state, a president, he rules the nation, a king. He rules his, you know, subjects. So God has given us this right to move over the face of this earth. But if you look to yourself right now, you are owing. Fear has gripped you. You know, you are so much troubled. I just want you to know that God didn't create you to put you down just to suffer. There are so many people when they are sick, then they get satisfied about their sicknesses and diseases. They say, well, God, you know, just allow this to happen to me just to test me. As you are listening to this telecast, that sickness that the enemy has put on you has to be gone. Don't agree with it. Don't accept it. It is never the will of God that you get sick. Praise the Lord. God wants you to take authority and dominion over the face of this earth. But you know what? We don't do nothing about it. You have to be somebody who is always on the top. When you speak, demons have to bow. When you speak, sicknesses have to go. Anything that you touch has to be blessed. Whatever your footsteps have to be blessed. But is that happening to you? It is not happening to you because something is wrong somewhere. We all know about Lucifer. He was an angel with God in heaven. And it came to a time that he rose against God. And the Lord didn't allow him to control him in heaven. So the angels in heaven fought against Lucifer. And the Bible makes it clear that Lucifer was able to take one third of the angels down here. See, when God created man, God gave us legal dominion. He gave us authority, you know, to, to possess the land. But man deliberately disobeyed God. That is when sickness, poverty, wars, um, litigation, you know, all these um, things that are troubling mankind came on the face of this earth. We lost the dominion. We lost the, the, the property. We lost the talents. We lost the, 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 the giftings. But thanks be to God. For bringing in Jesus Christ to come and die for us. My fellow brethren who are listening to me today, the word that I have for you today is that God is a compassionate God. God is a good God. You know, he doesn't want you to die in your sins. He doesn't want you to be poverty stricken. He doesn't want you to be, you know, to be sick. He doesn't want you to suffer. He doesn't want you to live a miserable life. So he is showing you today. That that authority is there for you. That authority is there for me. That dominion is there for me. But if we will sit down unconcerned and do nothing about it, then we are going to lose. What are you doing about it? You have that authority. You have that dominion. Use it. Don't settle anything less than the perfect will of God concerning your life. Yes, people might have cursed you. People might have said so many things concerning, you, concerning your life. And you think that, you know, everything is jeopardized. 
I have a message for you. Jehovah God is in your home today to lift you up once again. Know who you are. Know that authority that is given to you. Know that God has, you know, deliberately brought you on the face of this earth to win. Sister, you were born to win. My brother, you were born to win. And there's one word that I want to put into your spirit today. And if you will receive this prophetic word, your life will never be the same. That is the word persistency. Persistency. There are so many people who were brought up in a poor home. But as they grew and they saw the talents and the giftings that God has given to them, when they grew and they saw the authority that they have, I tell you, they worked on it, and right now they are on top. Have the desire to press on. Yes, your bills are piled up. Yes, your, 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 your credit, you know, it's, it's, it's even taller than Mount Everest. But I have a message for you, that if you will persist, if you will purpose in your heart, that you are not going to settle anything less than the perfect will of God concerning your life, you will be fine. Persist. Press on. It doesn't matter how difficult it is. It doesn't matter how bad the situation is. You know, there are so many people who have gone through this fire and they were determined not to look back. They pressed on and I tell you, they were able to reach the top and, and, and took whatever the enemy has taken from them. Oh, praise the Lord. One thing that will help you to possess your possession, one thing that will help you to be who you are in this world is fervent prayer. I'm speaking to you as a prophet of God that from today, if you will change your prayer life and keep on persisting in prayer, whatever your heart is desiring will come. Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3 the Lord says, call upon me, and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things that you don't even know. If you can call upon God, he will do it. Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. And when you knock, it shall be opened. You know, the word of God says, we who are sinners, if our children ask us bread, we will give them stones. When they ask for fish, we will give them serpents. Whatever our children will ask us, that is what we will give to them. And the Bible says, we who are sinners know how to give good things to our children, how much more. He, God, he loves us. He's a compassionate God. Oh, he's our sufficiency, our source of supply. Whatever you need, if only you can pray and move on with him, he will supply. Praise the Lord. So persist in prayer. Get in contact with Christians who love to pray. In your home, you can pray. In the airplane, you can pray. In the bathroom, you can pray. In your car, you can pray. In the subway, you can pray. Keep on praying. You are not going to lose. Who told you that you're going to lose? God is interested in your persistency. Another thing that can bring your breakthrough in this life is total repentance. God wants us to turn from our wicked ways and come unto him. If we will repent, he will do it. If we will repent, he will supply. Don't settle less than the perfect will of God concerning your life. Many people are settling for less. Oh, in this situation that I am in, it is fine for me. Well, I'm sick, it's fine for me. My bills are piled up, it's fine for me. Things are not going well for me, it's fine for me. My husband has divorced me, it's fine for me. My wife has divorced me, it's fine for me. My children are on the street, it's fine for me. No, it is the devil. Give the devil no place. The Bible says if only we will resist him, he will flee. Just resist him. Fight him. Have the determination in your heart that I'm going to win in this life. There's a house waiting for you. There's a car waiting for you. There's money from heaven with your name attached on it. But somebody is sitting on your miracle. Somebody is sitting on your blessings. His name is the devil. 
But if you will sit down and do nothing about it, he will take advantage of you. I want you to rise up and take your place. I want you to have the determination to move forward and speak to yourself that I was born to win. I am a winner. I am a champion. God has opened a new chapter for me. So I'm not going to sit down for the devil to manipulate me or intimidate me. I will persist in prayer. I will change my mentality. Repent from your sins and receive him as your personal savior. Oh, hallelujah. Church, brothers and sisters, men of God, my fellow listeners, there was a lady whose name was Ruth. And one woman came from Bethlehem to her country with her husband. And this name, her name was Naomi. This woman had two children. As they went to this lady's country, in the country of Moab, her children died, her husband died. But this lady purposed in her heart to go with this old lady. And Naomi told Ruth to stay because she had no womb to give her any child. You know what? Ruth told Naomi that your people are going to be my people. Your nation is going to be my nation. Where you will die is where I'm going to die. Where you will sleep is where I'm going to sleep. Because of her persistency, they went back to where? To Bethlehem. She didn't stay in her country. She went with this woman. And as she went with this woman, she had the opportunity to marry a millionaire whose name was Boaz. People are sitting, people are telling you to sit down. People are telling you to shut up. People are, you know, have put you even in a bottle and have cocked you. And you are always at one place and going in circles. I sense in the spirit that somebody is listening to this telecast who is going in circles. It's about time that you stay put and tell the devil enough is enough. And move on with God as Ruth did. When Ruth purpose in her heart not to lose when Ruth purpose in her heart to move on with God it doesn't matter what Naomi told her she moved on and he had she had this man to marry and church history tells us that Jesus Christ came from the lineage of Ruth Elisha followed Elijah Elijah told Elisha stay here for I am going to Bethel and I'll be back. Elisha didn't agree. Elisha purposed in his heart to follow Elijah. And when Elijah was about to go home, the Bible tells us that the mantle of Elijah fell upon Elisha. And Elisha did great and mighty works because of the word persistency. You are a millionaire. You can open your own company. There are so many ideas that Jehovah God has put in you to implement it. But you are just sitting down and crying and murmuring and inferiority complex has taken over you. Hey, Kaba Sataya. I want you to rise up and say to yourself that I'm not going to sit down and cry no more. Wipe your face. Wipe your tears. And speak the language of faith and go with God. You are not going to lose because God is your defense. And if God be for you, who can be against you? Never you settle for anything less than God's perfect will of God concerning your life. What is, the perfect, what is the perfect will of God concerning your life? The perfect will of God concerning your life is to be happy. Be a happy man. Be a happy woman. To have your peace of mind and sleep and sleep well. The perfect will of God concerning your life is that anything that you touch on the face of this earth has to prosper. The perfect will of God concerning your life is to be healed. The perfect will of God concerning your life is to be what? To be a giver. Bless people. But that can only come if you will repent and receive Jesus Christ as your personal savior. The Bible makes it clear that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If only you will receive Jesus as your personal Savior, if only you will turn around and receive Jesus as your personal Savior, 
my dear sister, my dear brother, who is listening to this telecast, your life will never be the same. You are settling for less. Don't settle for less. Because God has come to give you the abundance. There is abundance of rain that is going to fall to you. Money is going to come. That husband is going to come. That wife is going to come. Those children who are on the street, I tell you, some of them could be president. Some of them could be governors. Some of them could be mayors. Some of them could be businessmen and businesswomen. Hallelujah. That your son who is in prison, I tell you, if you will pray hard for your son, he can come from prison and be a man of God that God has destined him to be. If you will pray, if you will persist, if you will keep on fighting in the spirit, that son in prison can become a millionaire. That son who is, you know, I, I, I'm rejected by people. That son can come home. That lady can come home. Your children who are vagabonds, your children who have all, you know, deserted you and you are living alone, those children can come back to you. But if you will give up and say, well, now there is no hope, every hope is gone, then the enemy will have the opportunity to buffet you. I've come to your home today to bless you. This is the good news that I have for you, not to settle for anything less except the perfect will of God concerning your life. God didn't create you to come to this earth to suffer, to beg, you know, to, 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 to fall flat on your face and cry all night and, 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 and you know, walk on, on, on the face of this earth as somebody who has no hope, as somebody who has no faith, as somebody who has nobody. The whole of heaven is behind you. He has created you in his image and his likeness and has given you authority over the face of this earth. Don't let anything intimidate you. I shall be praying for you soon. Don't settle for anything less than the perfect will of God concerning your life. The secret that I want to give to you today is the secret of persistency. People have told you that you are going to lose. Forget about group pressure. Forget about people are saying, whose report do you believe? You have to believe the report of the Lord because the report of the Lord says you are healed. Ruth saw it and she persisted and she was translated to higher level. Shall we pray? Hallelujah. Father, your message is free. I know that somebody is toyed. You have given us legal dominion over everything. And the devil came to steal everything. But Lord, through the blood of Jesus, you have come to restore us. So Lord, I ask right now that my sisters and my brothers who are listening to this telecast, oh God, they will know this secret and rise up, oh God, and move on with you. Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Get out from these people because God has come to that home. From that rooftop to the basement, I ask the anointing of God to take authority over that house. I thank you and I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you. I hope to see you next week. The same time next week. God bless you. I will talk to you. Love you. Bye-bye. Yeah, friend. I believe that this message has blessed you. The operators are waiting. We want you to call us right now at 718-496-3455. And this Sunday, I'm inviting you to church. 1877 Bathgate Avenue, Bronx, New York. We meet Tuesday, 7 p.m., Sunday, 10 a.m. This Sunday, come to church here in the Bronx, and God will touch you. Bye.